Good morning, church. You know, the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all together in one place in one accord. And suddenly, like a mighty rushing wind, there came a sound from heaven that filled the place. You know, they were all in one accord. It filled the place. And all of a sudden, something changed. Something different happened to everybody there. It became a new season. It became a new day. Please rise as you're able and sing this song with me. It's a new season. It's a new day. It's a new season. It's a new day.
Amen. I don't know about you, but the Spirit is moving, so I guess we pray. <laughs> Precious Holy Creator, Spirit of all that is good and holy, Spirit of life, we ask to give blessings upon us this day as we gather together in your presence and in your name. I ask that each and every one of us truly feel your anointing. That which you gave those many years ago may continue to be given to you and to me this morning. May we receive your message, whatever it is. May we hear in our language, spoken by you. I ask this in your precious and holy name, and in the name of Jesus our Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 Please be seated. And welcome each and every one of you to <clears throat> MCC United Church of Christ in the Valley. And I'm Reverend Pat, your senior pastor. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to milk that for another week or two. <laughs> just, just want to let you know. At least I didn't put my, at least I didn't put my name and my, my title in bold this week like I did last week. I think everybody's been here at least once. Is there anybody who's a guest with us for the first time? No. So you all know what this is. It is our order of worship. And on the back side, I invite you to take a look because we do have a lot of really great um, announcements I want to call your attention to. Next Sunday night, we are having a Muslim Christian iftar. That is a breaking of the bread, breaking of the fast. It is going to be at 7.30. It is a potluck. I, I will be sending stuff out to you, but if you have ideas of what you would like to bring, please let me know after church, um, as long as it is not a pork dish. Um, that has been explicitly asked and requested not to bring. This is being hosted by the Muslims for Progressive Values and the Muslim Christian Interfaith Families. This is an incredible honor and opportunity for us to be with our Muslim brothers and sisters, especially at this time in the world, to break bread and to get to be in community with each other. So I really want you, if at all possible, to see if you can make it. Bring a friend. Um, we can sit up to about 60 or so folks in here, so um, it's, you, we are all welcome. So please, uh, please put that on your calendar. Make it a priority, if you can. Um, and uh, so we have a few other things. Today, after church, you already saw, we are our church of food. There's a great potluck, but it's even more than that. Some um, amazing food's already been prepared by Chef Lane, yeah. <laughs> our vice moderator and our garden queen. Um, <laughs> excuse me, our garden, our garden fairy. It's our garden fairy. No, he's. A, um, <laughs> <laughs> the wonderful and beloved Lane Sandin, <laughs> who is spearheading all of the incredible work that is being done in our garden along with Dee. We have a blessing of our garden today after church, so please uh, join us. Uh, we have, um, I've asked Ed Wall, right uh, there you are, lights are in my face. Uh, Ed, Ed is, I've asked him, he's an incredible uh, ri ritual um, maker, creator, leader, facilitator, and I've asked him to uh, lead today's uh, blessing, so he will be doing that. We also are, are also honored to host another great gathering, QT Spirituality, the conversation is on living. Is that right? You can see KC about it. She can tell you more information about it. Um, we are going to be the host tonight at 6.30, so please come on back, and uh, we'll leave you in suspense about what it's going to be. Um, <laughs> choir practice is, uh, of course, every week. Please see Michael. We're going to get to hear from our choir in a few moments today. And then I also have on here some dates, uh, June 3rd. Uh, it, the ICM Spanish-speaking congregation of uh, Founders MCC is celebrating their 26th anniversary, and so we've been invited to attend, and so if anybody would like to, I'll be there and anybody else. And you'll see some other things. Uh, Pride is coming up, and there's lots of different events that are happening, so uh, take a look at that. Uh, you also know, of course, prayer cards, change of information, financial giving, or breeze. It's even easier. Um, but go ahead and fill those information, especially the prayers. You know that we take prayer seriously, and uh, we, uh, we covet your prayers and your praises, and we'll share at communion. But with that, what we really, truly love is to know that we are in a place that we can come together each week and connect. 
And so I'm going to invite you to take a moment and turn to one another and welcome each other in the presence and the sight of God. shown at the end of announcements. Uh, when Re Reverend Rochelle, the interim moderator of MCC, visited with the board, uh, she said that she was going to do a tape and send it uh, for a congregational meeting. And somehow we didn't get it. So in dialogue, I said, you know, we're celebrating Pentecost. Why don't you send it for that? We're also talking about some other things. So there is a little bit, a little bit in here where she's talking about my installation. It, today is not my installation. Um, so just, but, but that's not the crux of it. The crux is the message she really has for the church. So I'm gonna invite you to view this for a moment. Good morning, I'm Reverend Elder Rochelle Brown, and what a day of joyous celebration. Greetings to you from all of UFMCC around the world on this day of the installation of your new pastor. Congratulations. We are so proud of MCC, UCC in the Valley, the ministry you've done in the LA area and what you will continue to do. Congratulations, Reverend Pat. Your board knows our commitment to each of you, to this church, to your ministries, to all that you're doing. And we are going to continue to build that relationship over these years to come. Many blessings to you on this joyous day of celebration.
Our scripture reading today is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 to 28, in this version from the message. Listen to what the Spirit has for you today. When the feast of Pente Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then when they heard, one after another, their own mother tongues being spoken, they were thunderstruck. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on and kept saying, aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They're speaking our languages, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head, or head nor tail of any of it. They talked back and forth confused. What's going on here? Others joked, they're drunk on cheap wine. That's when Peter stood up and back by the other 11 spoke out with bold urgency. <coughs> Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk, as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine in the morning. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, also your daughters. Your young men will see visions. Your old men dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they'll prophesy. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvelous. And whoever calls out for help to me, God, will be <coughs> saved. Fellow Israelites, listen carefully to these words. Jesus the Nazarene, a man thoroughly, thoroughly accredited by God to you. The miracles and wonders and signs that God did through him are common knowledge. This Jesus, following the deliberate and well thought out plan of God, was betrayed by those who took the law into their own hands and was handed over to you. And you pinned him to a cross and killed him. But God untied the death ropes and raised him up. Death was no match for him. David said it all. I saw God before me for all time. Nothing can shake me. He's right by my side. I'm glad from the inside out, ecstatic. I've pitched my tent in the land of hope. I know you'll never dump me in Hades. I'll never even smell the stench of death. You've got my feet on the life path with your face shining sun joy all around. This ends our reading. May God open up these words to our hearts and to our minds.
question. A song you've never heard. I think I'm original with something I find out I'm not. <laughs> it was really interesting. So we actually had come up with uh, uh, the title for today for a sermon blowing in the wind because that is what the Holy Spirit does is blow in the wind. And we heard the scripture not only blowing in the wind but really like a violent gut brush Whoa, like a hurricane. I have not experienced a hurricane. Do not want to. <laughs> Tornado. Haven't experienced that. 
some of you have, but you know, like a, like a violent wind, the Holy Spirit comes through. <laughs> How many verses? <laughs> And so, you know, it came to me how, how blowing in the wind, and uh, and in talking with uh, Michael, our music director, we were talking about seeing if uh, Sebastian would uh, and, and Gang would would uh, sing that song. Very appropriate. And you know, it was also interesting as I'm prepare, I was preparing for the message today. I was reading through a number of uh, pieces written on and about Pentecost, and wouldn't you know it, there was one entitled "Blowing in the Wind." I went, oh, man. <laughs> and they actually added a few verses, too. They, uh, the folks who were writing are, have, are enmeshed in the situation that's happening in Gaza right now. Holy Land, which is not acting very holy right now. How many massacres must we go through before they see us as humans? How many evictions must we go through before we have the right to go back to our homes. Yes, and how many times are we labeled terrorists before we are granted our rights? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. And I would also add, how many calls to the police will be made until white people realize that people of color are just living? How many black children must be told to be careful when pulled over by the police? How many children are going to be stolen from their parents just because their parents are fleeing oppression and crossing the border? And how many more children must die at the end of a gun in their schools before we finally do something about it? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. But you know, today we're going to talk about what that really means. You know, when we talk about Pentecost, oftentimes it's, you know, we wear red. Thank you, Dana, for... Where is she? She says, are you going to wear a chasuble today? I'm like, oh, yes, I will. <laughs> Not very often, because see, I'm in menopause, so I get hot really easy. <laughs> many layers, TMI, many layers. And it's getting to be summertime, but we're grateful that it's overcast. <laughs> OK, God, I need you to speak your words through me, not my own. <laughs> But you know, Pentecost, when we really think about it, you know, we've been talking for the last number of weeks since Easter about Jesus' journey after the resurrection to the ascension and today to Pentecost. Pentecost, yes, last week we talked about Jesus ascending to heaven, uh, to the heavens to be with his Abba. The importance of that, one of the important things about that is so that, you know, we could, he could see, I think, you know, did you really get it? Are you really going to now live the teachings that I have given you? I will send you the Holy Spirit, Jesus said. I will send you the advocate. I will send you one to comfort you, but not just to comfort you, but to also agitate you. The one to come to remind you that it, my, my faith, Jesus would say, it might be about love. But you know what? To create love sometimes and to allow the love of God to permeate throughout the world sometimes takes courage. And it sometimes takes action. And it sometimes is very unpopular. You know, I, I was uh, the same person who uh, affiliated with the passage that I just read. She herself is a UCC, United Church of Christ. She is a UCC clergy person who is a witness. She is in Israel living as a witness, being there as a witness to the situations that are going on there. And she shared also about Pentecost. She said, you know, she had gone, we, the, as many of you know, the United States Embassy was moved this week to Jerusalem. Ironically, it was all about religious, Christ, re, religious right Christians more than anything else. They interviewed a number of people from Israel and they didn't quite get why some of the people were speaking who were speaking on America's behalf, but you know, that's another tangent. But she, you know, she wanted to go and she wanted to witness this event. And I'm gonna say outright, I know that the Middle East situation is incredibly, incredibly complex. 
And that is important to remember because it is not a sound bite. It may have started simply and it is not simple. Just like the children being killed in our own schools, it is a complex situation. So hear me correctly when I say, I know that it is complex. But sometimes we have to stop living in a world of tweets and start living in a world of the gospel. Amen? The gospel, the good news, the scripture is 66 books. And that does not include all of the sacred writings that were written by our Jewish ancestors, nor is it all of the books that were written by our Christian brothers and sisters. But in all of what we as Christians profess to teach about, preach about, live about, is about finding a way to live God's love, God's good news in a complex world. Amen? And that is really, truly why I believe that we as Christians need, have to, have to, as people of faith, have to take the time and unpack complex situations. And we have to ask ourselves, it doesn't even matter how we got here. Now what can we do? You know, how many of you all have gone through bad relationships and bad breakups? Hmm. I've gone through one or two. And you know, as much as I would like to sit there and take the inventory of the other person or persons, I do not have that luxury. All I have the luxury of doing is looking at myself today and asking myself today, how am I going to interact with you? How am I going to interact with the complex relationships of my past? I, I, you know, we, can, we get stuck. How many of you have gotten stuck in situations where you have like, well, well, you did this. Well, you did that. Well, but I didn't do that until... <laughs> Oh my, we put all of that energy into trying to figure out how do we interact in love today. I'm not saying how do we interact in mushy-gushy love, but how do we interact in love and respect with each other today is what we're being called to do. But the reality is, is that right now in the Middle East, how many years has the war in Syria been happening? How many years, since 1946, I can say, in Israel and Palestine? But what's happening is it's getting more and more complex and more anger. How many of you remember, uh, what was it, the Hatfield and the McCoys? You know, when they find Romeo and Juliet, why are our families fighting? I don't know, we just are, right? And the more that people are killed, the more they will want to kill others. And when you are not the people in power, things get really, really hopeless. She went, Reverend Lauren, she went and she wanted to witness this and she went and she was a little bit distressed. She went to lament and grieve, she writes. I went to the embassy to face another kind of evil with my leftover rage from witnessing Flag Day in the old city where racism and hatred ruled the day. I went to face the reality of what was happening and I went to lament and grieve. I felt alone in my despair. I went to look for a community of people to protest with who could still raise their voice in hope of being heard. The advocate hadn't come yet and she was no longer here. I wasn't able to capture on film the pushing of Arab women and the shoving of Arab men and young Jews, but I was a witness. At one point, I stepped away to get a better picture when two soldiers said only the press could stay here in this inner ring. I could see that one of the soldiers was an American, and I told them I was an American priest who lived in Jerusalem. It didn't work this time, so I spoke to my fellow patriot. Our conversation became a petite sermonette on this mount overlooking the place where my country and Israel were celebrating victory while thousands were being bombed and in the end, over 100 people shot in Gaza. So I asked, are you American? He said, nodded yes. 
So you made Aliyah and are now serving a foreign country, the only democracy in the Middle East, and you are telling me I can't stand here to see what is going on. The soldier, the other soldier looked uncomfortable because he didn't understand what was saying. The soldier she was talking to, he looks down and he couldn't maintain eye contact. She says, so as you know, we both worship the same God and pointing to the Arabs and we are all people of the book. He listened, but tried to pretend he wasn't. We worship the same God, she said, and this God is watching us today. He is watching everything we are doing and not doing. This God stands with the oppressed, the widow and the orphan, and all those Gazans getting massacred. He is here watching you deny my freedom to assemble with your fellow brothers, with your fellow, and your fellow soldiers beat up unarmed protesters. It is not up to me to judge you for your sins, but make no mistake, you will be hold, held accountable. You will be judged, she says. And then she goes on to say, you know, it's interesting because I realized that the advocate did show up. The Holy Spirit did show up in giving her the courage to share hard good news with those who were gathered there. I say this because, you know, this could be anywhere, and it is everywhere. Conflict like this and to this magnitude and to this complexity and to this depth is around the world. It's even in our own country, we know this. How many of you were a little numb when it came on the 22nd shooting of our children? Be honest, I was for about a half an hour. <clears throat> wow, hey God, where are you? Hey Holy Spirit, you said that the Pentecost is supposed to be here. But you know what, friends? I truly believe that in this world of complexities, this world that, you know, the, everything that we talk about here, Jesus experienced and more just, uh, you know, with different ways of hurting each other. But everything we experience here, he experienced and more. And God is still present. Amen? Amen. The Holy Spirit, I believe, is here. The Holy Spirit in my lifetime has always been here. The Holy Spirit is said it was given and was given to the people at Pentecost, but truly that Holy Spirit has been here since the beginning of time. Ruha, holy breath. She's been here the whole time. Holy wisdom, Sophia, is the name she's given in Scripture. It's said if you read Proverbs 8 and 9 and one of the other creation stories, she was the companion with God, the Creator, and they created the world. Her job was to bring people. She sent out her, those who served her. They sent, she sent them out to all the ends of the earth to bring people together, to invite people to the banquet. This is important. She sent the people who served her out into all four corners of the world to say, come together and let us eat together at the banquet of God's table. Jesus follows in that tradition as well. Jesus followed in that tradition, and what did he do? He went and he invited people to come to the table. In this story, we hear about, the, about God speaking to people in their language. I always love figuring out who's going to do this reading every year. Sometimes people go, why did you give me that reading with those big, long names? I knew Tom could do it. <laughs> but all of the names that are listed in there are all of the known peoples of the earth at that time. They were the kingdoms and the countries from east to west, north to south, from all around. And what was happening? God was speaking to all of God's children in their languages. Amen? God was not trying to change their language. God spoke to them in their language. Just as God speaks to our Muslim brothers and sisters in their language, just as God speaks to the poor in their language, just as God speaks to the people who, 
who are fighting in Black Lives Matter, those who are crossing borders to find a better life. God speaks in their language and speaks through us. Remember, the people looked around and said, aren't these the Galileans? Aren't these the Galileans who are speaking in our language to us? Friends, we are being called to speak in the language of our brothers and sisters who we might not even know to bring the presence of God to them. Amen? And we have to, and the Holy Spirit coming sometimes, I mean, it talked about in one of the translations, it came in in a rushing wind. In another translation, it came in like a violent wind. Because sometimes, honey, when God moves, get out of the way. Amen? Sometimes you got to get out of the way. And we are in that time right now, friends. This week, it started in tragedy. It started with, you know, the his Sunday morning, you know, turning on the news last week and seeing the people, you know, who, and Monday being killed and slaughtered and all the angst in Israel. But it continued. We heard the leaders of this country call people from Mexico animals. And I will caveat this and say, I know that one of the comments was about a gang. I know that. But it is about a gang that was born in America, not in Mexico. <laughs> And more of those comments were talked about immigrants, period. Lawrence O'Donnell, I don't know if you, if you watch him, go to my Facebook feed, you can see what he said. He is simply a reporter. He was in the Senate for a while, and he gave one of the most incredible sermons, this layman, one of the most incredible sermons on why we must not demonize our brothers and sisters. Because he says, what part, Christian brothers and sisters, do you find Jesus saying it is okay to call our brothers and sisters an animal? Amen? Amen. That's an insult to the animals. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Human beings are human beings. Some are great and some are bad. Amen? There are white folk that are bad, there are Mexicans who are bad, there are Canadians who are bad, and there are, are as many, if not more, great ones in all three of those categories and more. Amen? Amen? Not all Israelis are out there trying to do horrible things to the Palestinians and vice versa. <laughs> It is not a land of tweets, it's a land of rich and deep scripture. And we have been reminded by him just as we were reminded by the Poor People's Campaign. Yes. Reverend Barber came out and he's been talking more and more about reviving the Poor People's Campaign, meaning we need to change the narrative, not demonize people who make less than $10 an hour and then be surprised why they're living on the streets. <laughs> A move to cut food stamps. I lived on food stamps for a while. Mm -hmm. Only within the last few years. That is a huge, huge testimony that I just gave because I'm going to tell you what. I didn't apply for them for years because I was ashamed to. But when I couldn't feed my daughter, I had no choice. I am not the only mother, father, man or woman who has had to make those choices. I say all this and more because it is a new season and it is a new day. Yesterday we heard, how many of you, own up, watched the wedding. No. <laughs> I watched pieces of it, but I'll tell you who I did watch. The Reverend Michael Curry. Amen? <laughs> How many of you watched him and thought you were in an MCC church? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm like, that's my sermon. He gave me. <laughs> He's talking about creating a new heaven and a new earth with the presence of God's love. I'm like, well, amen? Here, I just thought we were talking about what's uh, normal. And everybody's like, woohoo! People of faith are being called out over and over, and not just ones who wear clerical collars, to speak truth 
to speak God's love into the world more loudly, more, not violently, more passionately than ever before. One more joins the ranks of that, although I know she's been doing it for some time. She told me at the meet and greet time, 20 minutes before this worship service started, so it must have been 10, 10 hour time, her home church chose and voted to ordain Casey Slack into the Unitarians. If you don't follow this woman on Facebook, you need to. Incredibly profound theologian. Incredibly. Who I believe is one of the prophets for the future. So if you are, can be here at 6.30 tonight, be here. But more and more people are answering their calls in whatever way that they are called to. They are answering and allowing the Holy Spirit to passionately live into being in their lives. Because we are called friends to live passionately, to live out loud, to live our faith out loud and not just in the church. I don't know if I said this last week and if I did, oh well, you'll hear it again and I hope you hear it again and again. For me, church is not just about coming together on Sundays. I know a lot of churches where it's all about the building. I wrote this in my newsletter this week. It's all about the building. It's all about how fantabulous worship is. Now, I think we have a pretty fantabulous worship, myself. <laughs> we're not always smells and bells and all of that, but we're real, we're authentic, we're filled with God's love, and that makes church church. I truly believe that when we say, here are my prayers, oh God, hear my prayers, that we do hear each other's prayers and pray for one another. This is a place to renew, to recharge, to go back and really do God's work, to really be church, and that is the other six and a half days of the week. Coming together on Sundays is very important. It's very important. But it's what can help renew us to go out and be church. I was reading something the other day, and it was talking about blessing and anointing, calling people out and acknowledging their ministries but not, as I said, about work in the church. How many of you look at your work that you get paid for as a calling? As a calling. Some of you might be a secretary, actor, waiter, office worker, manager, minister, big Bhagwan supervisors. God is anointing you, chef. God anoints you and blesses your calling. Because in everything that you do, no matter how you do it or where you do it, you are bringing the presence of God into your little sphere of influence. What you get from us here on Sunday is the reminder that the Holy Spirit is still alive and well. To remind you that when you go and make a meal and you go bring it to people, that you are calling people to a banquet of love. You are calling people to a banquet of love. Amen? Amen. No matter what you are doing, you are inviting people to be in the presence of God, even if it's just being in your presence, because God lives through you. I talked with someone last night pastor of a gypsy church, God's Gypsy Christian Church. It's a real thing. It's big. It's been around for a while. And we were talking because this pastor was shunned because he was preaching the inclusive love of God to his congregation. He was brought before his elders governing body of the church and was kicked out and not allowed and is not allowed to minister anymore because he had the audacity to bring the good news of Jesus, the passion of the Holy Spirit to his congregation. And he said, you know, they also didn't like it when he performed the marriage of his dad and his dad's husband. 
But he said, you know, one thing that I have found is there's, there's a lot of gay and lesbian gypsies in Los Angeles. I'm dead serious. And he wants to know. He wants to know if we can help him create a space to minister to the young gay and lesbian gypsy folk here in Los Angeles County. Because he said, because he said these kids are hurting themselves and trying to kill themselves because their church is telling them God doesn't love them. The Holy Spirit says this church needs to be here because we got a lot of stuff to do. Some of it is our own stuff and some of it, this is why I love the church building, the church grounds. It's not about edifying it, but providing it. I thought to myself, oh my God, thank you, God. If we have the ability to be a meeting place so people won't die, the Holy Spirit's moving. So I end all of this to say, hmm. Some may say end times are near, and I said we're just beginning. You know, the sky might like, look like, oh my goodness, you know, the sky is turning horrible. And... But God is still here. My prayer for us folks, my prayer for you and me, is that we live our faith out loud. That we say far and wide that God is still in the loving business. And we live our lives in the loving business to ensure that our brothers and sisters here, our children here, as well as abroad, can stop dying and stop fighting. In the words of Reverend, the right Reverend Michael Curry, imagine our homes and families where love is the way. Imagine our neighborhoods and communities where love is the way. Imagine our governments and nations where love is the way. Imagine business and commerce where love is the way. Imagine this tired old world where love is the way. When love is the way, unselfish, sacrificial, and redemptive, when love is the way, then no child will go to bed hungry in this world again. When love is the way, we will let justice roll down like a mighty steam and righteousness like an ever-flowing brook. When love is the way, poverty will become history, the earth will be a sanctuary, and we will dawn that we will lay down our swords and shields down by the riverside to study war no more. Friends, the world is still here. We are still here, and the Holy Spirit has never left us. Let us allow that Holy Spirit to renew, to rejuvenate each of us individually, collectively as a church, for it is a new season, it is a new day, and God is in the house. Amen. Amen.
beautiful. Friends, this is a time when we get to share, and I specifically say we get to. We are given an opportunity to continue to help support this church financially and with our prayers and with our praises. So as the basket passes, please give and give joyfully as we continue to serve our God. Precious Creator, we ask blessings upon these gifts. We are so honored and humbled to be your stewards, to be the stewards of the gifts that you have given us so that we might continue your work of spreading the Holy Spirit, Christ, and you, our glorious Creator in this world. Blessings. Amen. Today, friends, we offer up our prayers as a community, as a community that continues to resist racism and sexism barriers of all kinds. We stand with all of those who are marginalized and oppressed, and I invite you to join with me in saying, God, hear our prayers after each of the prayers that are shared. We thank you, O oh gracious God, for the blessing of this church and each other. Hear us, O oh God of Pentecost. God, God hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Grant us the courage to stand for justice and not stay silent. Hear us, O oh God of life. God, God, hear our prayer. We pray for the conflicts, the attacks, and killings in the Middle East, your holy of land, especially Syria and Israel. Hear us, O oh God of peace. God, God, hear our prayer. We pray for the children and the teachers who lost their lives this week, along with their families, once again from a school shooting. And we commit not just to praying, but to taking action to bring an end to this violence. Hear us, O God of wisdom. God, hear our we pray for our denominations, MCC and UCC and our leaders. May we continue to embrace and proclaim your way of love in this world Hear us, O God of love. God, hear our prayers. And we pray for this church and all who serve it, that we may discern how we are called to serve this city and land. Hear us, O God of purpose. God, hear our prayers. And now we hear the <laughs> prayers shared by you. Thanks for getting, for getting on Medicare. No more health insurance worries. Amen. Amen. God. Hear our prayers. May the Holy Spirit be with me during each breath for blessings of my life's work. This and those attending the California men's gathering or traveling next weekend on Memorial Day. God, hear our prayers. Hmm? Just in. Prayers for Oreo. Yes. It's four-legged. 
that he gets healed from whatever is affecting him, his body, that no liver or brain illness be found. God, hear our prayers. I lift up a prayer of thanksgiving for my mother whose birthday is or would have been this Wednesday. I am so grateful and I am grateful for the yellow roses which are were her favorite. God, hear our prayers. At this time, I invite you to say the name or names of those who you would like to pray for and to lift up. Please share. <coughs> Hear us, O God of life. God, hear our prayers. And for these and all the prayers that are on our hearts, both spoken and unspoken, God, hear our prayers. So friends, we invite you to come forward and partake of this meal. The ushers will guide you forward to the servers who are gathered. You may take and dip and receive and receive a blessing from us if you would like. If you would like to receive communion just between you and, and God, your creator, Holy Spirit, Christ, there'll be a station of consecrated elements to your left to which you might go at any time. But friends, let us keep this feast one with the other, as the Holy Spirit has invited us all to the table, as Jesus invited us all to the table, so we too invite us all to the table. May the servers and acolytes please join.
friends, we take the last of the bread for those who could not physically be here, for those who are sick or ill. We pray for Edwin, who had to leave right now to um, go to the doctors. We pray for his healing, whatever it is that he's seeking. And we know that in the feasting of this bread that we find God. And this cup, may we receive it for all of those who are not here spiritually, those who are restrained from coming to this table by old thoughts or demons that plague them from receiving all of God's love. I don't want church to end. <laughs> but it's all good because we're going to continue it in the garden. We're going to be able to go from here in a moment. I'm going to invite us to go forth into the garden and just to, just to really say thank you for the gift of the earth and the gift of all of the hard work that's been done to remind us that God is at the center of it all. So friends, let's rise as we're able and receive the final blessings. We are the church alive because we allow the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. So I ask that we go from here, we allow ourselves to receive the blessings that are ours to be received, and that we go forth and continue to be on fire for God into this world. So go forth in peace, go forth in love, and continue to grow with God, in whose name I pray, amen. And amen. amen.